is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so we're going to be going over a24's crystal lake show that they still plan to make but we're going to be going over what went wrong with the iteration that would have involved involved brian fuller and why that kind of derailed go over some of the alleged things according to sources from the rap who is very reputable and yeah i'll share my thoughts on it all We'll actually also go over some more about what Kevin Williamson would have been doing for the show and who could have been playing Pamela Voorhees even. And I guess how many episodes you would have had per season if we would have gotten Brian Fuller's vision. But The Rap reported this morning, a very messy article if I may say so, that Crystal Lake was plagued by inexperienced production executives making questionable decisions, problems with the show's writing staff, and conflicts between showrunners and executives, according to several Crystal Lake team members who spoke to The Rap. There are... Divergent accounts of how far the show was over budget. At the same time, Studio Insider suggested to the rap that the show unraveled mostly because of Fuller and Gray. But one Crystal Lake Insider put it differently. It felt like everybody on the Brian Jim side were trying very hard to make the show. A24 felt like they were doing everything they could not to make the show. How much Peacock knew about the showrunner's removal is also a source of contention. Several sources said the streamer hadn't known about their removal ahead of time, while others suggest they were intimately, intimately involved with the decision. And still another claim that order came from one of the top executives at Universal. One source close to the production maintains that NBC Universal and A24 aligned in their decision to remove Fuller and Gray. A $300,000 deposit on sound stages in Canada had already been placed. Directors like Vincenzo, Natalie, and Kimberly Pierce were earmarked to direct episodes. Kevin Williamson, who wrote Wes Craven's Scream, was set to write what was described as the show's Red Wedding, referring to the infamous Game of Thrones episode set entirely on a frozen crystal lake with the summer camp's cabins trapped under snowdrifts. I had packed for being away for seven months, said one member of the Crystal Lake team. In the grand ambition of Crystal Lake, each season would be a deconstruction of the first four Paramount movies. The series would incorporate lore from several sequels, but remix that material in a way similar to Fuller's Hannibal, which interpolated the Thomas Harris novels for three seasons. Those close to the project on A24 side said Crystal Lake fell behind on producing scripts, which impacted the entire production. Several other sources rebutted that claim and said not only was the production moving ahead as promised, it was actually ahead of schedule. A24 also argued with Fuller and Gray over the scripts. A24 would say the writer's room is Jim and Brian's living rooms. Their thinking was, well, we've gotten as far with, we've gotten as far without them, said one member of the Crystal Lake team. Each episode of Crystal Lake, which was intended to have eight episodes per season, was budgeted at around $9.6 but according to sources, A24 wanted to cut that in half. According to one source close to the project, A24 is still committed to making the show, although it's unclear if the studio will use the original Fuller scripts and outlines or start from scratch with new creative leadership. One suitor, according to several sources, is Nick Antosca who worked with Fuller on Hannibal and wrote an unproduced Friday the 13th script back in 2015. Should Antosca get the job, he would jettison the work that had come before. Now, to my knowledge, jettison means he would start from scratch. He wouldn't be using anything of what Fuller did. Agents have labeled the Crystal Lake project as radioactive, according to another source with knowledge, even though it is one of the most important shows to Peacock, several other sources said. Some in the Crystal Lake orbit placed the blame at the foot of NBC Universal, who feared that the submitted scripts were too dark, but most of those the rap talked to to believe A24 was at best ill-equipped to handle a project like Crystal Lake. With A24, they panicked because they didn't feel they could manage the situation, said one Crystal Lake team member. It's the most honest explanation. To a degree, a source close to A24 agrees with this assessment. We kept believing we could make it work. Some of that is our fault, but we believed in Brian and his reassurance with us, the source said. We didn't, we just didn't have another option. Now that is just a few of the bullet points. That's not even the whole entire picture. The article, like I said, I thought was very messy, very detailed on what was going on behind the scenes. Apparently writers who had done scripts weren't being paid. They still need to be paid $100,000 or so. It was a very messy and enlightening article. Very juicy, if you will, that went over what went wrong with the vision for Brian Fuller's Crystal Lake show that is still going to happen, just not the iteration that Brian Fuller would have given us. 
What we get now, I have no idea, but the article does again reassure that the project is not completely dead, just like Jeff Snyder had told us it possibly couldn't be when he reported that it wasn't yet known if it were a permanent or temporary decision. Now we know it was indeed just a temporary decision because they're moving on without Brian Fuller. So all I can hope is that this project ends up being worthwhile, but it's just very frustrating when Friday the 13th fans, those of you who are diehard fans, because I'm not a diehard fan, I just know how frustrating it is when you have a franchise you want to see back so badly, or at least see a franchise you have been a fan of for so long succeed, and they are just encountering hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. And I know a lot of people would have loved to have seen what Brian Fuller would have done with this show. Now, I don't think I mentioned the person who would have been playing Pamela Voorhees. One source in this article said that Charlize Theron was being eyed to star as Pamela Voorhees in this show. Now, of course, there's no telling if that will still be someone they nab for the project going forward. But according to The Wrap and their reporting on this show and its mess is that Charlize Theron was being eyed to play Pamela Voorhees. I've already seen people online talking about they don't see how she could have done it. You know, if I'm being quite honest, the line, Jason, my special, special boy, that line in specific, I can hear Charlize Theron nailing to a T. She could sell me on her being Pamela with that line in her delivery. I'm just imagining her doing a great job in the role off of that line alone. There's no doubt in my mind that she would have been a great addition to the show. But we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening with Friday the 13th going forward, what this show will end up be being like now that it's not going to be what Brian Fuller had in place. But what do you guys think about these behind the scenes details of what apparently went on that derailed the Brian Fuller iteration of Crystal Lake? Was this juicy to you? Does it make you upset? Do you really not care? Again, those of you who are probably listening to this just wanted to know what this video was about, and I appreciate you checking it out. You can let me know what you think about all these details down in the comment section below, and if you're still looking forward to the Crystal Lake show, why or why not? Or do you really just primarily want another Jason movie? I think many people just want a Jason movie and couldn't give a rat's ass if this show was canceled in favor of getting a new movie. Let me know all of your thoughts down below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.